Hey there, everyone, this is Rachel with CommandCast.com, and here's the alphabet with Avacyn, Guardian Angel. This time we're looking at Portal. That's right, we're playing with Portal. Portal was one of the earlier beginner things. A lot of instant speed sorceries, let's say, they used to have a lot of things that would actually just spell out when you're supposed to play them or when you could play them or stuff like that. A lot of really basic creatures, a lot of vanilla stuff, and a couple of gems. Not enough to really say it's going to be a great week for updates per se, but it's going to be one of those weeks where we do have a few cards to add in and a few cards to go ahead and see which ones are going to be sticking around for the next update because the next one we're going to be going into will be Weatherlight. And those do, that said, does have a lot of cards I do want to check out. So this will be a nice chance to go ahead and see how some of these guys are performing, assuming we actually get a chance to see them. So let's go ahead and get right into it. We do have a couple of cards returning Mana Vault. And Basalt Monolith. Uh, last time, you know, we had Avacyn basically shielding two people at once. Partly because we had our Royal Guard out to take the, the blunt of the damage. So for nine mana, we were keeping ourselves and a teammate alive. But we didn't really have a way to build anything else. Because we were just... Nine mana is a lot of mana. It's kind of a... It's great that we managed to get there. With stuff like the land tax and all the land searching that we have. But at the end of the day, we need to start accelerating our plans. So I've gone ahead and included some of the more maximum mana rocks, Basalt Monolith and Mana Vault. You know, those things that can actually just pump out more mana per rock. You know, I still like the stuff like the Marble Diamond and the Fell War Stone that can give us a single mana. But I think in this instance, it's less about getting a turn ahead. And more about getting a couple of turns ahead. So something like Fell War Stone is probably something we're going to end up cutting in the near future. Which that will make that a lot easier for us. So a couple, so that's the two returning cards. Remember, just because we cut something once from the Alpha Bell doesn't mean we can't cut right it back. Mana Vault is constantly coming in and out, it seems. You know, one, day, one week I'll think, no, nah, I don't really need th that. The other week it'll be like well no I actually do just need this because we need more of it so this will be fine I guess and the basalt monolith is, is off so fine it's three man it makes three mana it untaps for three mana it's kind of phallic so it's th this should serve our purposes all right it does pay for quite a bit of ab absence limit break so there we go we have by my by my count four brand new cards for for this so, we're going to go ahead and introduce them as Alabaster Dragon, which is just, it's just a 4-4 four, four flyer for 6, but when he dies, he shuffles back into his, his owner's library. So it doesn't shut us out of our next draw, which I like, and it's to, you know, keep itself from going away. It's basically a thread that's going to keep coming back that doesn't, again, shut us out of drawing a spell we might need otherwise, where we go, okay... Um, we need our, we don't want our creature to be gone forever in the graveyard because we don't have that many ways to bring him back. But at the same time, we don't want our opponent taking advantage of this and, and just locking us out of our draw. So if someone's back into the deck, that should be fine, especially since lately it seems like all I ever draw is lands. Which is another thing, we cut two basic lands for the Mana Vault and Basalt Manalith, and we have enough ways to find lands now that I don't think that's going to be a problem, especially with this next card. Get of Estates. Gift of Estates is a sorcery from Portal and was reprinted in the Commander 2014 product, the Monocolor decks. If an opponent controls more lands than you, search your library for the three planes cards, reveal them, put them into your hand, and shuffle your library. Important to note that it just is planes and not basics, so this can be used in the future when we get, have dual lands. The Shocks, Original Duels, uh, the new Battle Lands, stuff like that. So that's a very nifty piece of utility. So, we, so between Gift of Estates, Tithe and land tax, we should have enough land searching that we can actually just go down to 37 actual lands. Now it says 37, I kind of forgot that Maze of Ith and Mistress Workshop are not real lands in here, but we still have like the Thawing Glaciers and all that. And considering that we were doing this with basically, I want to say 37 basic lands, no, 37 land mana producing lands and we were still kind of drawing a little too many we needed to be drawing spells i think that's actually acceptable now breath of life is the next one return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield 
So, kind of like Miraculous Recovery, only sorcery speed, and it's one less. It's one of those cards I w want to go ahead and keep around. We don't have a lot of creatures right right now. That's just the truth. We do have... We're starting to get a little bit more, and I think we have some more coming up in the next one with Weatherlight. At the same time, though, it's going to take a little while for creatures to actually catch up. The instants, the enchantments, the sorceries, those are going to be consistently be the best cards that we look at for decks. And if I have to lower my barrier of entry, then so be it. At the same time, we need to keep these guys back, so... Breath of Life, going to bring back any of the guys if we need back the Hoff or the Royal Guard. Yep. Alright then. And the last card is one that's more experimental than anything else. I kind I do kind of like these effects. Bless Reversal. You'll see this one is actually from Urza's, I want to say Saga? It's one of the, the Urza blocks. Bless, but this one, that's what this art is from. The original is actually from Portal. And it's a 2 mana instant. You gain 3 life for each creature attacking you. There are times when people go for the Alpha Strike, and, you know, Avacyn can't either can't shield everything, or there's just a lot of stuff coming at you and Avacyn's not out or whatever. This is a cheaper trick, and this was actually something I cut, cut, uh, cut Jabari's Influence for. I like Jabari's Influence because it does steal a creature, but that was five mana, and part of the reason why we couldn't really play it is because Avacyn is such a huge mana sink that we need our tricks like that. To be a little on the cheaper side. I don't mind paying a little more for some of the actual board building stuff. But the if we're doing tricks like that, they need to be cheap. And Blessed Reversal is in fact a very cheap trick. This one will probably be better in like the Eilie deck further down the road. Just because it can be a massive life swing. The other question just becomes, how often are we going to be playing token decks for against this? Because with Avacyn... You know, once they reach a th threshold, we're just going to be using her. If not, this might actually be okay. And I guess we could always use both at once to just get a massive life buff. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Now, we did end up cutting the force field. Just because, one, it prevents all but one of the damage from an unblocked creature. I want to go ahead and try putting some of that pressure onto the Righteous Aura that just says prevent the damage from a source of your choice. Absent also prevents sources of choice of a, co of a color. So, those are much more broader than the force field was. I definitely like force field. Force field is a very powerful card. If you have to worry about getting beat down, it's a fantastic card to have. But I want to try and keep those options as flexible as possible. And so when you're choosing between like that versus the Perforos and the uh, the, sh the what was it Death Shadows? No, it wasn't Death Shadows. The Shadows Enchantment that we fought last time. I want to try and keep those options open. We've also got rid of the Favorable Destiny and the Crusade, the, the aura that gives an, a, a creature plus one, plus two, and uh, Shroud, as long as you control another creature. And then Crusade, which just gives all white creatures plus one, plus one. The Crusade was actually hurting us just because, well, we were buffing somebody else's white creatures at the same time. Sometimes it'd be good because it'd have to be us and them teaming up to take on one other person, but that's the power of the encompassing aura. Or, uh, like, in theory, Crusade is more powerful, because it comes down, turn two, you can you can go one drop, in turn two, you go two more one drops, turn three, you go two drop and a one drop, turn four, you go, go double Crusade, win for game, or something like that. It just w wasn't working as well. Right? We're lacking the power to go wide consistently. It's a Anthem effect, but we'll get better Anthem effects eventually. So I'm not terribly worried about that. So just a couple things that I'm going to be looking for. Like, I'm going to have to decide if I really want to keep Felden's Canyon here or not. Because as much as I do like the deck thinning and being able to shuffle resources back into my deck, you know, we just might we might just need you know that spot for other things right now. You know, probably am going to cut the Fell War Stone. You know, things like Disempowered and see how well this does. And of course. And it's just stuff like Jalome Tome. The Jalome Tome's been here for a while, and I still just don't see it. Almost ever. So, we're going to try and figure some stuff out today. Let's go ahead and get into that first game. <laughs> 